All right, good day, everyone. Scott coming in from CFB Edmonton, here to provide you that circuit class today. My style of circuit today, I'm jumping in with my trusty kettlebell. So, grab a kettlebell. If you don't have a kettlebell, you can also do most of this with a dumbbell uh, with a couple modifications. Mainly to a swing. So that's just going to be a slightly different way to be able to hold it. And how that's going to be is you're going to be holding it as a thumbs up position. So if you picture the dumbbell running this way as we're holding that actual bar on it, you're turning thumbs so that when you swing, you're not going to bash your knees or anything like that. Now, before we get started, of course, we got our disclaimer. We're going to go through a solid warm up with this, and then we're actually going to dive into the programming. It's a little bit on the slower pace today. Um, for some that may haven't been able to have a chance now that they're back at work, they're just too busy and they just don't have that chance to get into their PT routine. This is going to give you that chance to be able to slowly build yourself back into it. Now, not to say that if you're joining in and you're super fit, that this is going to be too easy. What you're going to do is you're going to add more weight, you're going to add more intensity, you're going to add more reps, and you're going to take less rest. Okay? So, there's other ways around it. So, if by the end you went, ah, it wasn't as hard as I thought, take a look and see how much effort was put into this one today. If it still wasn't, maybe it was just a little bit on the lower end, use it as a good active recovery style kind of workout. It is going to be a full body, so we're going to target everything throughout, but our main focus is going to be with that kettlebell. Side note to it, we're also going to tax the forearms, so we're going to be doing some unilateral stuff, meaning we're doing left side only, then we're going to do right side, then we're going to do left side, then we're going to do right side, we're going to do one leg, the other leg, and then we'll put things together where everything's working in unison, okay? So before we get started, that disclaimer. So in response to COVID-19, PSP is offering virtual fitness to the Canadian Armed Forces members. By using social media platforms, the virtual fitness classes are tailored to the Canadian Armed Forces personnel become available to everyone. Uh, participants that are not part of the CAF uh, recognize and acknowledge that their age, their health status, their physical fitness level is unknown, and it is entirely up to each individual to assess their ability to participate within this class. Since it's preferable to consult your physician before beginning any exercise programming, we would invite participants who are not part of the CAF uh, to consult the Get Active questionnaire through the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiology. All right. Getting ourselves rolling, normal warm-ups, again, kind of happen as lots of dynamic stuff, lots of movement, getting the heart rate up, getting all that going. I want to be able to lubricate the joints through mobility, okay? So I do a little bit more of a mobility kind of warm-up kind of style that way. Still going to bring fluid to the joints, warmth to the body. We're still going to get sweating by the end, but at the same time, I'm worried about more joint health with this one over the cardiovascular. This is more of a strength circuit, so we're not focused as much on the cardiovascular side of things. Not to say that for some exercises we might still be getting into there. So if you're huffing and puffing, it's not necessarily a bad thing. All right, starting from the ground up, you're going to take that ankle, you're going to do ankle rolls. Now, taking a look down, you notice that most people just do kind of an ankle roll here. It's not getting into a good range of motion. It's not adding fully into the areas that it can move. The reason we want to go into those areas is if for some reason throughout these exercises or even just throughout life, this is fall prevention on an ankle, for sure. So, if you do roll an ankle, proper joint health with it, proper warm-up mobility drills that come with a warm-up for any exercise that we do, is also then gonna translate to when you're outside and all of a sudden you get that slip, you're able to catch yourself, and it's not gonna do as much damage, all right? So, going back to it, roll to the outside. So, the whites of my shoe, all the way around is what I'm trying to get to. So, notice that I roll, looks like I've rolled my ankle, but I've got a lot of weight on my opposite leg. So I'm rolling through, very inside, and then rolling all the way to the outside of that heel. So taking it from just this short motion, big exaggerated motions. Now, take a note with this. It's not just my ankle moving. My knee needs to move around. My ankle needs to move and my hip needs to move. You'll even notice that my upper body gets going as well. So we're getting a lot of motion throughout the body all the way up the chain. It's not just one isolated joint. I want you to reverse your direction. All right, I want you to switch sides. I can never remember looking at the camera if it's my right leg going next or my left leg going next. I'm currently working on my left, so depending on how the camera is, it might still look like my left, it might look like my right. But opposite side, mirror me. Doesn't matter which way you go. When it comes to this, you can do it for time, you can do it for reps, 
or I'm doing it based on timing between my chats with you. Switch in ways, so opposite direction. While we're starting our warm up, I wanna talk a little bit about the programming itself. I want your knee, your hip, your ankle all at 90 degrees, meaning no flat foot, no fall. Nice here, and I want from just the knee joint itself, draw as big a circle as you can. What I mean by that is it's not the whole leg, it's just from the knee, and draw circles. So you're balancing a plate on your thigh, and for me, I've got terrible balance today. We want that circle as big as you can. Again, don't point your toes. Don't let your toes start rolling around. So take a look down. It's gotta come from the knee. So it's a knee hip oscillation. Other direction. If you do need to stop for a second, shake things out, maybe the hip flexor's burning already, that's okay. Switch direction. Again, this is as still as it can be. All coming from the knee. All right, switching sides, other way. Hip, knee, ankle, 90 degrees, pick away, go. Nothing crazy, we're working on a little bit of balance, which is always great as well. Again, something in the football prevention. Something I like to bring into my workouts a little bit more. Other direction. So, getting into that programming. It's gonna be eight exercises, basically four exercises on our left, and the exact same four on our right, okay? So it's really only four exercises, but we're gonna go through all one, set them down, hip swings forwards and backwards, so just a leg swing or a hip swing, whatever you wanna call it, back and forth. If you need to hold on to something, by all means, hold on to something. So this is now where it comes into taxing the left and the right forearm. We're gonna do everything on one side, everything to the other side. We're always gonna start with our left, then we're gonna to roll to our right. Everything starts left, rolls to the right. Your goal, if you can, throughout this, now side to side, as I take out my kettlebell. Again, hold on to something if you need. If you can, I don't want you putting down that kettlebell for the entire time that we do one arm. It's gonna work on reps, not on time. So if you're a little bit quicker, you can either take more rest, move on to the next exercise, take a little bit longer with it, do a couple more, other side. So your choice of either change your reps, change your weight, you can have more than one bell with you. Some people like to do swings at a heavier weight because they're stronger in a swing, but a shoulder press with it being a smaller muscle, they go lighter, okay? And side to side. Beautiful. All right. Feet together, knees together, or as close as you can. I'm bow legged, they don't touch together. So, rolling around kind of that angle, you're not coming totally off to the sides like we were doing before. Basically, hands on top of the thighs, and I just want you to roll knees. But shift the weight from the heels to toes, heels to toes. Even my heels come off the ground ever so slightly. So look in here, ever so slightly they come off the ground. That's totally okay. Other direction, so same thing, just reverse it. Just because you went one way and it felt easy, doesn't necessarily mean the other way is gonna be easy. So it's interesting to see how the body works that way, right? All right, coming up to the shoulders, up and down. Alternate them, we're not swinging hard. We're staying relaxed while we're flinging them. We're not tightening up, right? We're getting things moving. We're trying to get things loose. So if the arm flops, if the hands flop, the elbows bend a little bit, you can kind of just let them flop. It doesn't matter. I like them more straight. You do you. We're gonna go side to side, but the trick to it is as you come across, it's thumbs down and then thumbs point behind you. Thumbs down, thumbs point behind you. You can get a little balance with it. Try and switch top hand and bottom hand each time. All right, here it is. You're going at an angle, 45 degrees. Out, 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 
out. So I want that little bit of a tilt and a lean, but you're basically doing this, right? So it's up, up, except I want that lean with it. Reason for the lean is I want the obliques to wake up, because we're gonna use them a lot. There's gonna be a lot of direction in this one. Again, it's gonna be, it is more on the endurance side than the way of reps. Okay, over the strength, we're shooting anywhere between 10 and 12, uh, with some things reaching up to 25. Palm up, big circle. When you get stuck, turn that palm so that you return back palm up. This is where you get all the real crunching, creaking, grinding, clicking. They shouldn't do that. <laughs> Beautiful, other arm, coming up. I'm gonna demo the first four exercises, which are gonna be all left arm. The exact same four in the exact same order is gonna happen on the right side afterwards, all right? So you only need to remember four, and if you don't, you're just gonna jump in with me as I make the changes. Remember, if you need to rest, rest. If you need water, stop, take water, okay? Last one's our neck, so whether you want hands in front or just to the side, you're gonna tilt your head to one side, roll, only to the other side. Don't go all the way back and then back over. So get your tunes. If you've missed those, get the music going. Other direction, so we're gonna flip back over. You got your water, you got everything going. And again. Challenge yourself, forearms are gonna get pumped, it's gonna feel great, you're gonna feel like Popeye, it's gonna be awesome. All right, starting in easy, left hand first. One side note, if you got a watch on, two options, either flip it over so it's on the inside of your wrist, or take it off, because the last thing you want is to break that screen. Been there twice, very expensive, don't do it. Get rid of that guy. Number two, and I'm gonna explain that second one, which is basically the first rule of kettlebells, is in our hip swing, no touching yourself in kettlebells. You're all laughing going, what the hell are you talking about? This is what I mean. When we're doing our swing, a lot of people place the other hand kind of in their hip, right? But if we take that away and we turn from the side, when I hinge, I get stuck because my hand's in that joint. It can't actually bend in its most efficient way. That's because we've got it locked in. Same thing if we're stuck here, and we're trying to swing. We're trying to create momentum being rigid and we need to be relaxed. So no touching yourself in kettlebells. The other hand, you're going, what do I do with it? When I'm swinging, the other hand's just there. So it's just following along. It's still matching. It's helping me create momentum. Okay, so from the front, if this was my bell, right, you get our swing going, most lock in like this, or like this, none of that, here. Notice it's a hinge, it's not a squat. All right, hinge. That's our first one, okay? Swings, that's number one, 25 swings. Then we get into the same hand, so we did our swings on our left side, we bring it up into this position, notice that my hand's at a 45 degree angle, so that it keeps my wrist nice and straight, we're not here, hard on the wrist. Bring it up, we side squat to that side. So, big step, sit back, my balance is off today. We sit back, we drive up, we come back, we sit back, we drive up. Closer to you, easier it's gonna be. If you're out here, it's hard. If you're out here, it's hard, okay? That's exercise two. Exercise three, you go back to your swings. So it's the exact same swing we were doing before. 25 more, previous one was 10 by the way. Then you bring it up and we lunge. So this leg and this arm stay in front. Left bell, left leg. We come down, we drive up. Remember that the drive up is a drive off the front leg. I'm not pushing off of that rear leg. So it's not a drive off my right, it's a pull up from the left. Okay, then we switch. How we switch, if you don't want to put the bell down. In front, out front, switch hands, and then you continue in as normal. All right? 
it sounds like a lot, maybe it's your first time with the kettlebell, all you need to remember, number one, no touching yourself in kettlebell. Number two, the majority of this is coming from the hips, don't use your back. So keep it straight, keep your chest proud, looking forward, and as we swing, our neck's not here with each swing, we follow it. So everything stays in neutral, okay? That's key, then you're not gonna get the tension in here, and maybe that's why you're not a big fan of a kettlebell. Sometimes you get too much tension here, it sucks, okay? Here we go, 25 swings. This is on your pace. Start now, start with me, keep with me, swing faster, swing slower, don't matter. 25, go. Remember, glutes. There's our first 10. That's 20. One, two, three, four, five. All right, bring it up. One clean, right here. Side squat to that same side. 10. And again, more strength, don't race them. Form is more important than the cardio. Remember, it's a strength workout. One more. Good, 25 more swings. If you gotta put it down because it's burning, that's okay. Shake it up, grab it, keep going. Twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Rack it back up. Bring it back up. We lunge. So left leg, left bell. Pull yourself up. Drive it up, but off the front leg. I'm not pushing off that back leg. Two more. Boom, boom, now we switch. Either switch hands or put it down and switch hands. 25, here we go. That's already 10. Twenty there, five more, come on. One, two, three, four, five. Rack it up. Side squat now to that opposite side. Remember, slow it down if you need to. There is no rush. Three, two, one more. All right, swing again, 25. Maybe you're huffing and puffing right now. That's perfect. Cardio without running, right? Almost there. Come on. That's 20 already. One, two, three, two more. Boom, one more. 
Yes, rack it back up, however you get it up there. Your choice, carry it up, whatever you need. Lunge. Drive off that front leg, same side as the bell. Good. One more. Boom, set it down. Three solid minutes of break. Well done, well done. Forearms feel tight. You give them a squeeze, they feel just pumped right up. Great feeling. Love kettlebell for that. Got grip strength to work on, great way to do it. If you're finding that you're starting to sweat and palms get sweaty, you're kind of a sweaty palm person, and it's slipping, you can use a little bit of chalk if you have it, or you look at the tough love of side of things, squeeze harder. If you're gonna lose it, don't throw it, squeeze harder. Simple as that, right? <laughs> if you're in the house, Make sure you do not throw it though. The last thing you want is to go through the TV, husband, wife, significant other, roommate, whoever, they're gonna be pissed. Don't do it. Keep it in your hands, okay? This is where I say if you need to stop mid-swing, go ahead, stop mid-swing, that's fine. Give it the shake, you dive back in when you need to, okay? You'll be able to catch up with the video because within the three minute breaks, you'll be in a break time while we're starting our next set still. You'll be close to finishing your break if you stopped a couple times within our first set. You'll get a good demo of it and you can start seeing myself go through those next set of exercises. So by the time you start in, you're already ready to go and you know exactly what you need to do, okay? We're about halfway. Another minute and a half. In about 40 seconds time, we're gonna talk about the next four exercises. Remember, it's only four, but we're doing four on the left and the exact same four on the right, all right? This one's not so bad because it's basically, again, two movements are the same, just like the swings. We had a swing, we had something, we had a swing, we had something. Same thing with this one, okay? A little bit more dynamic, a little bit more of a pull from the upper body now. So we've created that swing. We've created that pendulum. We're following what the bell's telling us to do by hinging from our hips. Now we're gonna start to create that. And how I used to say, bring it back up in the first set. So you saw me do kind of that clean motion and bring it up to here without putting it down and without using another hand. That's our first exercise of the next bit. All right. It's going by fast, be like 20 seconds. First one, get your swing on, bring it up, we clean, we catch, drop it back down, we clean, we catch, drop it back down, we clean, we catch. Okay, that's number one, clean. Number two is a press, so from here, just a straight up press overhead. Bring it back down, catch, press. Bring it back down, catch, press. Okay, then we clean again, that's number three. And then number four, we get into a plank row. Now, bonus is you got a little bit of extra time off of me. The plank row, because of the bell that we have, even if you're using a dumbbell, it's gonna be a core rotation. What I mean by that? Notice that when I have the bell, I can't really pull very high. It doesn't go very far, right? So I'm gonna pull it into my ribs and then twist. Put it back down. Pull it to my ribs and twist. Back down. That's our plank row. Oblique row. If you're not feeling it here, you're probably rotating too much. Balls of the feet stay flat, gotta stay flat. Little bit of twist is okay. Feet turn, not a good thing. Left side, let's go. Clean. 10, I lied, 12. So on you, some people pause here for a second. Some people can just fly through them. You're gonna do you, take your time. Your goal is to try and get it to land softly, not like bang. Right? Nice and quiet, nice and soft. Five more. Four more. Three more. Notice his hand's still moving. I'm not locked in here. Right? One more. Boom. Keep it up top. Press. Ten. If you're finding the press getting hard, you can push press, which is a dip with the legs. 
but ideally we want to be able to strict press this. Two more. I lie, that's three more. Two more now. Boom, one more. Good. Drop it back to your cleans again. Twelve more. And up. Nice. One, two, three. One, two, three. Perfect. Great job, great job. Be proud of yourself with this. Kettlebells look simple. They're not. Everyone's killing it right now. We're halfway already. That's seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Two left. Boom, last guy. Good, set her down. Get into that plank row. So again, nice flat plank. Wide feet. Pull to your ribs, twist. Put it back down. Pull to your ribs, twist. Ten. Seven. Two more. Good, last one. Beautiful. Come on up, switch sides. When you're ready, get a couple swings, and then clean in when you're ready. That's it. At six already, halfway. Notice that my other hand, that free hand, still moving. You'll see the swing's not as hard, not as violent. It's more of an upward pull as soon as it gets out from between the legs. Last guy. Press when you're ready. You can hold here, you can rest. And then when you're ready, press it up. Nine, one more. There's 10, beautiful, clean, boom. The more of that swing you create, the easier it is to pull up. If it's a short swing, I'm really gonna pull it out of the bucket. Swing, it's easier. If you squat, it's harder. So I'll use the glutes, they're powerful. Two left. Good, one more. Good, down it goes. Plank in a row. Everyone's favorite, you probably hate it by now. It's so hard, it's so good. When you're ready, hit it for 10. That's five already, keep it up. Guy. Beautiful, break time. Nice, big high five. Same thing, three minutes. How did that feel? Do a self-assessment. You can probably tell, you can probably hear. I'm huffing and puffing. We haven't even taken one step into a run yet. And we are killing it. Here's your chance, grab some water. Catch your breath. If it's getting to you, some of you like the hands overhead. I don't find it crazy effective. If you have a hard time catching your breath, I prefer hands here. You can get deeper. All right. Go team, this is it. Crushing this. Still got people sticking around, this is awesome. It's growing. Thanks everyone for coming. It's been a while, we've been picking up, so it's been harder and harder to produce the live videos. We've been getting busier and busier, which is great. It means normal operations is now happening again, and that's such a good feeling, right? 
We're in a world of unknown, uncertainty, irregularity. So having a little bit back to normal, even though it's a small little, we feel more grounded, right? So take a look back through your weeks, see what's kind of grounded you, what's kind of kept you going. There is a lot out there going on between the pandemic itself, all the election fun stuff, maybe just your own mental health. And sometimes we need to focus on us first. It sounds greedy, but the only one that's gonna be looking after yourself first is yourself. So, we have a support system, but it starts with us. This is a great way to do it. Those that have joined in so far, I've got a good number up top. Viewers, love it. Again, thanks for joining. This is clearing the mind. You can't change anything for the next 30 minutes. And I should have said this at the start, it would have been the next 60 minutes. You can't change life right now. You're enjoying it right now. You're in the moment, you're feeling great. And everyone's doing so well with these exercises. Now, what I need you to do, if you're still thinking about, oh no, like what am I gonna cook for supper? Class is almost over. I got this homework to do. I got whatever it might be. Be. kids got to go here you can't change that right now so don't stress leave it over there yes it's gonna be stressful when you get back to the real world but guess what you're free right now you have no obligations but to yourself and that's the most important one because we are as humans people pleasers we want everyone to be happy and sometimes we forget about the most important person which is us to create that happiness in so keep it going that's good all right, got about a minute, so next four exercises, push press. I talked about this in the last set. You're gonna start up top. We had the strict press, which was this, which was our last set. Now I want the push press, which is a dip in the knees first. So we're gonna create momentum through my legs to help throw that bell up in the air. So it's gonna feel lighter, it's gonna feel easier. We're gonna catch, bring it back down, catch, bring it back down, all right? So if you wanna speed it up, some people have the coordination to pop, catch, drop in, pop, catch, drop in, pop, catch. You can do that as well, that's fine. Then a chest press, lay down on the floor. Up it comes, right here. Set it up, other hand to the side, and with just a good old chest press. Nothing crazy, all right? Chest press, that's it. Then we get back up. Do your push press again. So you're back to this guy again, one more time, okay? And then we got a staggered row. Left hand first means left leg backwards. I'm only stepping so that my toe and my heel are in line at the back, I'm not standing this way per se. This we're gonna topple over. Same distance, I'm just staggering out. We hinge forward and we row. So from the side, feet normal, step back, hinge forward, and we row. And then same thing on the other side, all right? If you're finding the left is getting more tired than the right, start with your left first. Don't think, oh, I'll do right first and then switch to my left. Don't do that, stay on your left. There we go, bring it up, 12. On you, ready, on you. You can rush them. If you're quick with the coordination, I like the recommendation of nice and slow. It's what I call mindful practice. I'm thinking about what I'm doing. I'm not just pressing it because. I'm thinking about a certain motion. I'm thinking about a certain moment where I can feel that transition of the bell. Because then it's easier. And you guessed it, 12. We got three more. One more. Good, down to your chest press. Drop yourself down. Easiest way to grab your bell is curl up beside it. Help with two hands. Get it up top first, good setup, and go for 10. You can do it on a bench, you can do it on the floor, whatever you got. Two more. Good, one more. Beautiful, coming up, slowly set her down. Back up you come. When you're ready, get into those presses, those push presses. If I'm slow and you're fast, that's okay. Get going, do a couple extra. Same thing, 12. Oh, 
Oh, shoulders are feeling it right now. Take a break if you need right here. This is your rest. If you really need this, hold on to it. Ideally, you just hold with the one arm. Two more. Really use those legs. Good, one more. Nice, and your row. Stagger that stance, hinge forward, and row. Same thing, 10. That's nine. There's 10. Switch your sides. Take a break if you need to. This is the hardest set out of them all. All right, press. The reason I chose the left side first, the majority of the viewers that I've talked with are right-handed. So I want the weak side to work first because it's gonna be fresher at the start. And you'll be able to use the sympathetic response across the body. So neural pathways, all the nerdy physiology stuff that I like. It helps you. One more. Good, down you go, chest press. Woo. We feeling it. Got a good sweat going. Get yourself set up. And when you're ready, 10. up, 12 more press. Really use those legs if those shoulders are getting tired. row to finish. Stagger that stance and we row. Two more. Nine. Ten. Good. Set it down. Three minutes. Oh, we are sweating. Easy but hard, hard in the way that it's challenging. When something is challenging, even if you grab a lighter weight, it still feels difficult because the body's not sure how to use the muscle, what muscles to use, how much tens uh, intensity of that muscle do I need, how much of a contraction. Excuse me, but you're killing it. Keep that up. Just know it's not the easiest of workouts, but it is a lighter build in, okay? You guys have got some huffing and puffing going. Maybe you're like, screw you, man, this is tough. I'm still glad you're here. Would you have done something the rest of the day? Potentially not. Maybe this is your challenge for the day and this is what you exactly what you were looking for and you were waiting all day for this. That's even better when you got that drive, that yes, I wanna do it, I can't wait for this class, I don't know what it's gonna be, but it's gonna be amazing. It's exactly what we want, all right? Again, does that build into your happiness? If so, keep doing it. All right, now let's test the mental. We've already done our first three rounds. Our rest is still ticking away on my watch. Who remembers the first round? Who remembers those four exercises for the first round? What was the first one? Hip swings, exactly, you got it. What was the second one? The side squat, perfect. Third one? Yeah, hip swing. Trick one, four. Lunge, yeah, which leg? Same as the kettlebell, yes, perfect, love it. 
We're doing the exact same round four as round one, and then we are finished. We are done. We're gonna take tons of time to rest, relax, stretch, get the heart rate down, cool back down a little bit, rehydrate, and then you're off to finish out the rest of your day, whatever you may have planned, okay? 25 seconds. Feeling it, feeling it. Note with this one, we're gonna get through those eight exercises, the four left, four right. We're then gonna take a two minute break, which is still actually part of the workout. Then we're gonna do a cool down, okay? So those two minutes afterwards are actually still part. We're not just gonna drop straight into a stretch. I wanna get the heart rate back down because heart rates are gonna start to increase as we fatigue. After what we've done, you're probably going, yep, feeling tired, man. That's great, but now we need to bring it back down before we actually sit down and stretch or just stand still of any kind because we don't want kind of that head rush. We don't want you falling over, smashing your head on the coffee table, getting lightheaded, anything gross like that. All right, so back to the hip swings, 25 hip swings, side squats for 10, 25 hip swings, lunges for 10, switch hands, all right? It's on you. If you're tired and you need to slow down, slow down. That's fine. If you're still feeling great, hopefully you've started already. All right, let's go. 25. Think about the motion. Don't think of a squat. Think of a hinge. So from the side, here's what it looks like. Right? We're not squatting. We're hinging. It's almost like you're hiking a football, right? Notice that when I get to this side, this hand follows along. You'll see it match the bell, basically. I get higher in the back here, but that's okay. As long as I'm not doing this, because notice the change in my swing right now, right? I can't get as deep, I can't get as powerful. Five more. Two more. One more, boom, rack it up, side squats. I'm gonna shift over so you can see me. Boom. Boom, nice. Three to go. Should feel hard, as you can see on my face. One more. Good, back to your swings. 25 more, don't stop now. Come on. This arm almost gets a break. We're good. We're not coming back to it. A dozen done already. That's it, team. Don't throw it. I'm starting to lose it. Taking a tough love route, squeezing harder. Three more, two more, one more. Bring it up, lunge. Boom, nice. Everyone's staying strong, I like it. Three to go, come on. Two more. Last guy. Beautiful. Switch hands, let's go. Now the heart rate's taken off but the arm gets a break, right? Arms feel jazzed up, pumped. There's 20, five more, four more, three. Two, one, bring it up, side squats. Really drive off of it, come back. Half 
喂。One more. Nice. Swing it away. Almost done. Come on. Fight it. Fight it. Pick that back up. Come on. You know you're stronger than that. Keep going. Already ten down. Ten more. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Hold tight. Two. One more. And up. Woo! Just about lost it. Well, enjoy. What? Two and three. Nice. Keep it going. This is nine. Last guy. Ah, nice. Set it down. Two minutes. Whew. Your body's like holy Dina. No, you're done. Congratulate yourself. Big round. Pat on the back. High five. Whatever you got in you right now. Maybe your shoulders are too tired to get a beer. That's okay. Catch your breath. Bring it down. If you have a mat after the two-minute mark, or even a minute and a half, you can roll that out if you prefer. I brought a mat. I decided against it. I'm not going to use it today. I'm going to sit on the floor for you guys. We got our stretch left. That's it. We're almost there. Checking those forearms again. If you want to check heart rate and how it's feeling, two fingers, either on the inside of the wrist, just above the wrist, on that top thumb side. Very light press, you can feel it. You can reach in for the carotid, but I do warn against it. If you push too hard, there's potential of cutting off blood supply and you get dizzy. So if you do very, very light. A lot of people like this one better because they can find it over the wrist sometimes, okay? So if you're someone with a weaker pulse, sometimes here's a little bit easier. Just make sure you're not overly pushing and kind of half strangulating yourself, right? Strangling yourself. So, check that. Stare at a clock if you got something. Count out 10 seconds worth of beats. So time 10 seconds, count how many beats, times by six. That's what your current heart rate is at. If you don't have it, just get a rough idea in your head of a 10 second count and just get a ballpark. If you know that you feel it and it's like, wow, that feels like it's doing this still within 10 seconds, keep moving around. You're not ready to sit down yet. But if it feels like it's more back to a little bit of a normal state, it's not going to be the typical nice slow beat. It might still be a little bit quicker as it should. You just worked out. You just fatigued the body. But it should be coming down. As long as it feels like it's coming down, another great way to know is just feeling your overall body. Does it still feel like it's in your throat or is it kind of moving back into the compartment it should, right? If it is, good thing. If it's not, please keep moving around, all right? Our last bit, we're gonna do it all standing because maybe some of us right now, if we sit down, we're not getting back up, right? So we're gonna do everything standing. We're gonna start with our quads first from the squats and the side lunges. Grab onto one, bring knee to knee first and then push the hips through. If you find that you need something to balance on, of course, grab, I'm never gonna say no. As you see me wobble. Closer the knees are better. If you're out here, you'll feel that you lose the stretch. So try and bring it down closer to the floor. The more straight up you are, the more of that stretch you're gonna get. With the same leg, plant that same heel. So stick it out in front of you. Plant that heel, sit back, feel the stretch. So from here, plant that heel, sit back. Feel the stretch, pull your toes up towards you, so then you can feel that stretch. So from this side as well, plant a heel, pull my toes up, sit back, feel the stretch, calf, hamstring, I even get a little bit into my glutes. Hanging out here. Hope everyone enjoyed that. Always an intense one. 
for some, you'd be like, ah, that's a little bit more than beginner, depending on your fitness level, absolutely. For some, it's just a good ease back in, and it's knowing the difference between like a working burn and a not good kind of feeling, right? So a lot of this, you got that burn, you got that fatigue, and the brain tried to shut you down. Switch inside before I continue. So grabbing onto the ankle, knee to knee, push the hips forward. As soon as the body's stressed, it instantly wants to try and get you to stop doing what you're doing because it's tiring. So that's the burn in the shoulders, that's the burn in the forearms because the strength isn't there compared to the demand that you're asking. It is there, but your brain's telling you it's not. Reason I say that is if it wasn't there, you would have thrown that kettlebell across the room or through the field, right? So you hung on to it, you've got the strength, but how many went, oh my God, this burns so, so much. Absolutely. That's the body getting stronger. That's weeding out that weakness, right? We're going somewhere that the body's outside of its comfort zone. Plant that heel, sit back, and it needs to adapt to it. So the easiest way the brain knows to adapt is take the shortest route, which tells you to stop. And that's where the mental game and the struggle of fitness can come in. Number one, if you're just starting out, we get the soreness for the first few weeks. It's almost a huge barrier to us because it hurts to work out. So our brain says, don't do it. And that's where the psyche shuts us down. And many clients have a hard time getting to the goals that they truly want to achieve because the brain's taking over. You need to know that you can get through that like any other habit that has nothing to do with exercise, whether it's a diet, whether it's a new hobby, whether it's a new skill, maybe you're learning photography. If you don't keep doing it consistently, you're not going to get better at it. Same thing with fitness, right? Nothing's different except the body will talk back to you. If you leave the camera by itself and don't do anything, it's not going to do anything. But if you work out, the body's going to rebel for the first bit, just like a little five-year-old kid would. You don't give them the toy that they want. Same idea. Idea, right? So you need to just dig through that. So I'm glad that you did. That's perfect. Take one hand, doesn't matter which hand, place it behind your back. So just like so. Opposite hand comes to the other side of the head, tilt away from that arm that's behind your back. Feel that stretch all down this. Maybe if you had a lot of shrugging during the workout today, you'll feel it. Then from here, you can actually rotate your head in this angle, rotate down, look into your front pocket. You're gonna feel that stretch change just a little bit. And you're just gonna oscillate back and forth to wherever you feel the most tension. Wherever it is, you're gonna stop there. Beautiful, coming up slowly, switching sides. Hand comes up, tilt over. Once you got the stretch for those few seconds, I want you to rotate that head down just that little bit and then oscillate back and forth until you find the spot that's the worst. Most tight, no pain. Pain means you back off. If there's still pain, it means you stop. No questions. Beautiful. Last guy taking a kneel. Kind of in like a sprinter kind of start, pushing the hips forward, stretching out that hip flexor. Again, from the squats, from the hip hinge, it keeps closing it down. So we just want to elongate that again, get it back moving and mobilized. Wonderful. Other side. Last one. Switching over. Driving forward, feeling the stretch in that hip. Thanks, everyone. Again, thank you again. Have a good one.